been quite a run we've had, but... Howdy, viewers. Brad Proprietor of Our Stool Entertainment doing a wrap-up of my third playthrough of Red Dead Redemption 2. As you saw in the previous video, link down below, I achieved 100% complete for Red Dead Redemption 2. I guess I was a bit shocked that a little more than a quarter of a percent of people who played the game went for this achievement. But thinking back on what I went through to achieve this, I understand. So, no regrets? Regrets for what? I have no regrets. Was it worth doing? Yes, with caveats. Going for this achievement made me understand the world of Red Dead Redemption 2 and how vast and intricate it really is. Compared to my previous two playthroughs, I had to really immerse myself into the game. But it also took a very long time and there were plenty of annoying things along the way. Would I do it again? No, not at all. Uh, not unless someone paid me six figures to do so, half up front and not refundable. I started my third playthrough with the goal of 100% complete back in September of 2023. I usually played a few hours on the weekends with more time during the winter to, to play. And I finished in February of 2024, according to the actual achievement on my Series X. So six months to play, sometimes intensively to get to 100% complete. If you are watching this video, it is July of 2024. All the videos, including the 100% complete video paying respects, were recorded during my third playthrough. Interestingly, 100% is technically not 100% complete. Uh, you've just did what was required of the official game to complete 100%. There are still items to find, animals to observe, and treasure to hunt. Videos after this will be from my third playthrough that I recorded while still exploring the world after completing 100%. And the world is just that vast and detailed that you're not really going to get everything. To blow your mind a bit, I am probably playing through the game a fourth time. In fact, I know I'm playing through a fourth time when I'm recording this video. And I'll be posting those videos from that playthrough. And my approach is different than the other playthroughs and my 100% playthrough. In fact, I have some ideas during my 100% completion playthrough that I'm going to do during my fourth playthrough. Okay, one of the major annoying aspects of the game that became apparent is in my attempt to 100% complete were some of the stranger missions. The dinosaur bone mission, the legendary fish mission, hunting requests, the rock carving mission. They can be started by Arthur and finished by John. I suggest you do the rock carving mission as Arthur because everything you can find is available to Arthur and it's easy enough to do. You know, Arthur can finish the four hunting requests, but John has to finish the fifth hunting request. And to be honest with you, I'm just leaving that off. And even the dinosaur bones mission and the legendary fishing mission have to be completed by Arthur, but can be started by John. I'm debating if I want to start them and just leave them for John. Then there's the mission Duchesses and Other Animals, which starts in Chapter 4 
And I supposedly, I, I, I understand that John could finish it if Arthur starts it. But in my previous two playthroughs, when I started it, I was never able to really finish it. And so you get this really short window where you can fulfill all of Algernon's requests and do it as Arthur. And it's an extensive, annoying farming thing because sometimes the animals don't spawn and you got to find different like flowers and they're hard to find and unless you do some intensive research or you have a guide or something it's very hard to complete this mission and it's very annoying and i understand why people just quit because my first two playthroughs when i started this mission i just quit halfway through and i suggest you do complete duchesses as arthur 100 percent because once you wind up in Guarma, there's no knowing if it will relaunch or if it's over with as John. So, yeah, it, it, that was an annoying part. And then some of the challenges were really annoying. I mean, you have to complete all the challenges as Arthur and then only a few as John, but you can complete most as Arthur. The only one that you really can't complete as John or as Arthur and you have to do as John is the herbalist challenge because going to New Austin is really, really complex. Most of the um, hacks or glitches are patched over. And the one you can do with this uh, wagon or cart, way, way too much time to do. Just give up on Herbalist number nine, and when John comes back, finish it off, and then finish off the whole Herbalist uh, challenge. And then some of the challenges, like uh, Gambler and Explorer, were just totally useless. I mean, Explorer could have been opened up to where you have to find 20 dream catchers and you know things that would help the player get 100% but they didn't do that i mean there are things you could have done in explore and it would have helped you and then the bandit challenge well parts of it could not be completed until you progress the game to chapter four and that was kind of difficult in some ways because oh well i got all the bandit challenges complete up to this point and then i have to progress the game to chapter four maybe it was by design i don't know but it, it's just one of those things that really kind of made the game a little annoying and then doing 100 percent complete i mean it gave me a lot more in-depth look and the greater insight of the characters. Um, Arthur, I always play as like an anti-hero. And then when I was doing some of the challenges, his honor got really low. And it was interesting on in how he was treated as by the NPCs and even by camp members when his um, honor started to really dip down compared to High Honor. I mean, even Dutch kind of went off on Arthur about how, well, we had a good time until you started shooting everything up. I'm like, wow, okay. Never saw this before. And speaking of Dutch, he reminds me more of a cult leader rather than an actual leader with a plan. I mean, Dutch talked big, but he seemed more enamored with how people followed and obeyed him versus actually doing anything for the group. And it became extremely apparent near the end of the game when Arthur was dying and John had kind of recognized that. And he was saying something to Arthur, but Arthur was a little more, oh, no, 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 it's just Dutch being Dutch, stuff like that. And then John is actually a more insightful an interesting and intriguing person than you think. I mean, he does observe things and he makes 
comments about things to other characters. I'm like, okay, yeah, that is really insightful. I mean, let's face it, he is a little more intense and intelligent than you think. And of course, Micah was always a bastard and a jerk, and killing him is always awesome. No matter how many times I play the game, when I get to the point of killing Micah, it's just awesome. As far as Red Dead Redemption 3 goes, um, I think it should follow Sadie Adler. I mean, it, it's eight years between the end of the gang and Arthur dying and John returning. Sadie helped John and his family escape. And then she went on to become a bounty hunter, etc., and that eight years could fill in a lot of gaps. I mean, Sadie could bump into gang members like Mr. Trelloway, Pastor Swanson, even Karen Johnson, and find out what happened to Karen and uh, Mr. Trelloway and Pastor Swanson. I mean, they do give hints in the game, but what really happened? And then Sadie's journey to Mexico and becoming a bounty hunter would really be awesome. And you could bring the game up to the point where she, as her final thing, writes a letter to John at Pronghorn Ranch. I mean, what do you think Red Dead Redemption 3 should be about? I think it should follow Sadie Adler's journey, and it would be perfect and fill in the gap, and would be in that whole time frame that the whole Red Dead Redemption uh, series is following. But let me know in the comments. Well, everyone, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave comments. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon because I post seven video game related videos a week, Sunday through Saturday, and you want to stay informed. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to hit the big subscribe button and bell icon because I post seven video game related videos a week and you don't want to miss out. Thanks for stopping by.